My name is Saurabh, and I'm replacing my engine. Alright guys, we're back at it again with another engine oil thingy related failure. There's oil inside the intake this time. No leaking, no leaking. But um, you come around to the back of the car. Fire extinguisher plus oil residue on the rear. I did a 206.8, so that's my PV. Hooray. And then I was setting up for another lap, coming out of 14 here at least, and then uh, no power. And then check engine, and then smoke, and then the car died. So, don't know what's happened yet. This is not a sensor failure, I think. This one's a, this one's a real deal, so. Yeah. Probably not a sensor issue. But before I talk about my blown motor, I have to take you back to March. Uh, round two of 8-6 challenge at Laguna Seca. Uh, I thought I was having a pretty good day until, uh, let me just play the clip. Apparently, I had left my oil cap loose that morning after topping it off. That meant my oil went about a quart low while I was on track. At the time, I didn't think it was a big deal, so I just topped it off, sprayed down the engine bay, and kept driving. A couple weeks later, my fuel pressure sensor gave out. Uh, it threw a code and went into limp mode. I had to borrow a car for round four of 8.6 challenge. Thank you, Nico. Luckily, it was a quick fix. I just replaced that sensor and was back on track the next week. I thought that was the end of my problems. Until this. So there I am, sitting in my car as the grass under me catches fire. The very kind Thunderhill staff informs me that I need to get out of my car so they can put it out. Just stop my timer here and then I take the toe of shame back into the paddock. At this point, it's obvious to me that my motor's blown and all that's left to do is decide how I'm going to fix it. The same thing to do would be to give it to a shop, not worry about it, let them handle everything. The economical option is to buy a complete engine assembly and drop that in yourself. The riskier, more adventurous solution is to do a long block replacement. I'll be covering what that means in a future episode. But for now, we need to get this car towed home, and we need to get the old engine out so we can look at the carnage. We'll see, I got, I got two months to come back from this somehow. We shall overcome. Okay, well, step one was to drain oil, and that has already failed because I attempted to drain the oil, and what came out instead was coolant. So, what comes first is actually going to be draining the radiator, which will presumably be some mixture of coolant and oil. Alright, so we just drained the radiator. Turns out CSF radiators have this aluminum bolt instead of a petcock valve. So you can't attach a hose and drain it in a controlled fashion. And when you unbolt it, it splashes in your face. And if you have ventilated goggles, if they have holes like this, do not use them for fluids. Uh, the hoist is here. Okay. Man, I've loaded that thing way too many times lately. Uh, you could take off the whole thing. thing. Screwed in, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Okay. It's dripping. Yep. Oh, geez. Okay. Where's it dripping? Yeah. Yeah, there's like oil and coolant in the intake. Oh, on the front, on the filter side by oh, your okay. right hand. I, so, I mean, I mean, this filter is down. You, you oh, cannot reuse it anyway. Correct. Yep. Oh. Can you open the bucket? Yeah. RIP the environment. I'm trying to find a good place to do Okay, yeah, I got a like, pretty bad rock chip that like I super glued. No, 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 Yeah, there's a little thing here. Here? This one. You move your hand? Uh huh. So th there's a tab this way, and you put it in this way, and you lift it. Can I have this whenever you use? It's clearly an equipment issue. <laughs> Always blame the tools. It's out. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Nice. My God. This is diabolical engineering, man. I swear to God. Now do it again. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just have no finger strength. 
Soft hands. <laughs> you got soft hands, brother. It ain't worked a day in your life. Why would they make it like this? Why would it be vertical? That doesn't even make sense. Why? Why would they do that? Uh, it's hard to reach. I need an extension for my arms, bro, straight up. Just take it to the shop, dude. No! <laughs> <laughs> There's nobody to remove the engine. I see, so the problem is that we're poor. You'll be fine when you initially, I think you, can, you can actually kind of feel the fuel pressure. That's what's pushing this up right now. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> it's only, it's oh, only yeah, 40, it's spritz, it's only, it's only 44 PSI. That's a lot. <laughs> what? Like as much hey, as it's tired. better than uh, the other one. It's a 2000. Put this around here to catch any fuel that spills. Okay. I'll let you keep your thumb there just in case. Yep. And as you slowly pull it off, the fuel will come out. Time. Oh, just wiggle it up. Just no ring. Oh, not bad. That's not 44 PSI. Okay. Like, that's about good. Okay. Like, Does it have a spray for anything? This is like a very simple process. No. Just in case you need like a new exhaust hanger. One of them is the exhaust hanger. It looks fun. Yeah. That works just yeah. Okay. Got Wonderfully. But how does it oh. not have like transmission oh. fluid? You're not. Uh, you thing. need a washer. Yeah. yeah. I'm pumping. Yep. Keep going. Well, it is moving. Yep. Just tilt it a little bit. Yep. It's not making That's noise, good. which is good. Okay. I'll, I'll look from the top to see if there's any wires. No, it's still sitting on the engine mounts. Did you, did you actually unscrew it? The, the did engine you mount? screws are out. Right. Yeah, so one of two of those bolts were engine mounts. mounts. One of them okay. was... Oh, it's not. Uh, it's yeah, I just felt the car move. I told you inside the teardrop, there's some big flange nuts. Oh, in... Uh, Oh, what did you take off? I took okay. off the uh, yeah, it was still, I think the there were uh, more ahead. ahead in front. There's like these uh, two round things, they were like here or something, something that looked like it was an engine. Yeah. <laughs> The chassis is fine. <laughs> Suspension or the brakes? <laughs> it's just the the engine. I'm not sitting in the car for the for the first two months. Give me two months. <laughs> give me the builder's warranty. There's, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going in the car until oh, he drives at least 500 are, miles. Is that spoke coming from? Because that what part? I don't want is like in the car too is for everything to just like fall off. That's because he forgot that, to put one back bolt back on the right I place. Was, um, not trusting this. <laughs> But yeah, if I hit the clutch pedal, would yeah, like yeah. push the motor? I think to it? Just learn um, because now there's nothing holding it. It would, but it only moves like this much, and we're almost well, coping. We're, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, yeah. I'll just kick it really hard. <laughs> you could try, see if it does anything. Yeah, yeah. maybe you we'll unlock a new. It's all supported right now, so secret mode would be fine. <laughs> Oh, that actually worked. That worked. Oh. Did he just hit the clutch? Kick yeah. Again? yeah. <laughs> I kicked the clutch. <laughs> Let's go clutch kick, baby. <laughs> just uh, mind the overpipe underneath, but yeah, we're good. All right, we'll go up some more now. Dude. Okay. Let's go. Okay, just keep on lifting up. I don't see anything up. Going? Yeah, there you go. Clear. Good. I right. hit the top of the garage. So and stop right there and just lower, lower it down. Lower. You should pose with this sucker. More. Are you the engine of the car? Yeah, I'm the... All right, and that's actually probably pretty good right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. cool, that's enough. Wait, savings. Wait, where are you leaking from? Shop no, no, there's like a, the heater core holes, maybe? Oh, oh wow. Wait, so you have to flush Oh, you can hear core? the connecting rod moving around. Oh, so. yeah. And then once we get all these screws out, then we have to fry off all the RTV. Yeah. Would you like to? Someone, no. Someone's <laughs> <just going. laughs> all right, I love how we do it. Oh my oh god. My god. Oh, oh my god. Oh shit. Shit. <laughs> that is the, is that the small? That's what, oh, that looks this is like a bearing. bearing. This is a bearing. Yeah. The bearing got scrunched up. The bearing got removed. What is, uh, is that? 
the top. Straight oh my god. Straight up. Oh, this is, oh, this is a whole ass rod. rod. Okay, this is the rod. Yeah, it looks like it's just two. So yeah, the, the just, two bearings just disappeared, basically? Yeah, and it just punched through everything. Well, it didn't punch a hole in the block, so I didn't spill oil. So that's fun. And... Well, I hope you enjoyed an action-packed episode one of the engine rebuild series. Tune in next time for episode two. Why did my GR86 motor blow? That's going to be a bit of a technical deep dive into what went wrong, and it's going to be an exploration of what I could have done better. Spoiler alert, the answer is not just Subaru bad. Uh, I tease it a bit in this video, but essentially, I made a mistake. The goal of the series is not to make people afraid to push their cars. I think that if you take care of these cars, they take care of you. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't pursue a warranty claim. I think it should be fairly obvious from this video that my motor was modified and abused. And so I don't think it would be fair for me to go to a dealer and hide those things and try to pursue a claim. It's just not right. What I can say though is this motor gave me 44,000 hard miles, 23 track days, 18 of which were 8-6 challenge events. And of those 18 events, I ended up on the podium 12 times. So it was pushed very hard and I think it held up very valiantly. That's all I'd have for now. I'll catch you all in the next one, but in the meantime, please enjoy my motors one last ride. Thank <laughs> you.